What can we learn from wabi-sabi? Previously, I mentioned about wabi-sabi's characteristic and also found out that wabi-sabi is way more than just an aesthetic style. Instead, it has a deep philosophical feel. Based on American artist, writer, Leonard Cohen, he states that the metaphysical basis of wabi-sabi is that things are either devolving towards or evolving from nothingness. He gave a good example where a traveller searching for shelter as dust approached in the hinterlands. He saw tall rushes everywhere, so he bundled an armful of them with a knot. At the moment, the tall rushes evolved into a grass hut, a place where he can shelter in. The next morning, before the traveller embarked on his journey, he unknotted the bundle, the grass hut disappears and deconstructs back as a large view of rushes again. The original state of nature seems to be restored but minute traces of the shelter remains. A slight twist in the reed here and there. The memory of the heart is still in the mind of the traveller and in fact, in your mind as you are watching this video. While the universe disrupts, it also constructs. New things emerge out of nothingness. There's a lot of lessons Wabi Sabi can teach us in life but I just can't list down every single of them because that will be a one hour documentary so I'll list down some of my favourites. First, the truth comes from the observation of the nature. Like most books and websites, they will describe wabi-sabi as the beauty of impermanent, imperfect and incomplete. These are the three most obvious lessons gathered from years of connecting with the nature and is deeply influenced by the teaching of Taoism. All things are impermanent. Everything will come to an end. Object wears down. Planets and stars die, and even intangible things like reputation, history, data, all of them will eventually fade into oblivion and cease to exist. All things are imperfect. Nothing that exists is without imperfection. Everything has its own flaws. Even a sharpest razor blade, when you magnify it, you still can see micro chips, micro flaws on them. All things are incomplete. We often give our own definition of completion, but in fact, there's no right definition on that. Is the plant complete when it flowers, when it goes to seed, when the seed sprout, or when everything turns into compost? The notion of completion has no basis in wabi-sabi. Beauty can be coaxed out of ugliness. I truly believe that wabi-sabi is not to everyone's liking. The beauty of wabi-sabi, in one respect, is the condition of coming to terms with what you would consider ugly. Beauty can spontaneously occur at any moment given the right circumstances and proper point of view. To me, beauty and ugliness can be really subjective. And in fact, ugliness can remain ugly. It's up to oneself to appreciate it. Knowing that wabi-sabi is an appreciation of transcends in life, it stirs a bittersweet comfort because we all know that all existence shares the same fate. A perfectionist striving for a perfect life is gonna be a struggle and trying to hold on to your past, present, future is pointless. So why not accept the inevitable? It also means open our heart to opportunity and also a gift in a simpler life. Wabi Sabi is not found in what people consider as the perfect moment when the flower is blooming, where you reach your goal. Instead, it is found in moment of inception or subsiding. Sometimes it's about stuff that is hidden, tentative, and ephemeral and most of them are subtle and almost invisible to our vulgar eyes. Like most of us, I get overly blinded by the final result, the final goal, the completion and I tend to forget to appreciate and enjoy the process of getting there. This gives me a good reason to slow down, be patient and appreciate the process instead of always getting unsatisfied with my progress. So sometimes I think it's good to actually pull yourself back from constant pursuit of more. So we can observe what is already in our field of vision. I think it's essential for us to reflect every now and then about the fact that life is ephemeral. It's never forever. We need to surround ourselves with people we love and cherish. Knowing what we know and now, how should we act? How can we surround ourselves with people we love and cherish? I think it's really by getting rid of unnecessary things. Wabi Sabi means treading lightly on a planet. It means knowing how to appreciate whatever you stumble upon. It also means that being materially poor and spiritually rich. In other words, Wabi Sabi tells us to stop our preoccupation with success, wealth, status, power, 
and luxury. Why not enjoy an unencumbered life? Honestly, I'm still learning and trying to live my life without being materialistic and make my life more meaningful only with the essentials. However, this wabi-sabi point of view can be a little bit confusing. I mean, a lot of people might think that it meant having a goal or having an ambition is bad or telling you to give up being driven. I was confused as well initially because I disagree that we shouldn't have a goal, we shouldn't have desire for success because I feel that we still need goals for us to improve and make a difference in the world. But after reading the Wabi Sabi book from Beth Campton, I start to realize that maybe Wabi Sabi meant getting really clear about what you want and why you want outside of all those materialistic desire and to see life in a bigger picture don't give yourself redundant stress or redundant expectation from others and i realized that i can be perfectly imperfect just as i am and with this realization i feel that i don't even need all this materialistic desire i don't even need to own something just to boost my self-image. Wabi Sabi is the balance between the pleasure you get from things and also the pleasure you get from freedom from things. And in this sense, I feel that Wabi Sabi can be very similar to minimalism, not in terms of the aesthetic style, but in terms of the philosophical, the metaphysical basis of these two concepts. I mean, both of them are strongly influenced by Zen Buddhism, so no surprise for that. So everyone might claim that they know the feeling of wabi-sabi, but only a few can articulate the feeling well. That's the reason why I have issue explaining the concept of wabi-sabi. And I've always been thinking why the concept of wabi-sabi is not spread across or spoken about. Because of this concept, aesthetic obscurantism. A lot of Japanese critics feel that wabi-sabi should maintain its elusive and mysterious qualities because inaffiliability is a part of its specialness, being incomplete and imperfect. But I do believe in what Leonard Cohen mentioned in his book, if the ability to create the aesthetic is to preserve, some guideposts need to be placed for the future generation. So now, what's wabi-sabi? To me, wabi-sabi is a feeling. It's not just a word that describes an aesthetic style or visual aspect of a thing. Rather, it's something more deep. It can be a philosophical viewpoint or it can be a feeling where you encounter a kind of beauty. It doesn't mean that we cannot use the concept of wabi-sabi as the inspiration of a fashion design or our home decor if you want to appreciate the rustic simplicity. But if we pigeonhole wabi-sabi simply as a design trend, we are missing out all the real opportunity that it offers and to live a meaningful life. If I'm a designer, I'll probably head towards this wabi-sabi design direction but sadly I'm not but I feel that I still can imply this concept in my lifestyle it makes me realize how I should live my life and how I see stuff around me and really appreciate what I have in life am I interpreting wabi-sabi right or wrong? I guess no one knows because everyone has their own perception of wabi-sabi and that's the thing that makes wabi-sabi so beautiful because there's no clear answer on what it is. The impermanence of the concept makes it incomplete. So I guess it's perfect to be imperfect. So that's all I have for this Wabi Sabi video. And if you'd like to support this project and future ones, you can head down to my Patreon link in the description below. I'll have more self-development, self-improvement type of video in the future. You can help a lot, help the growth of this channel by pledging a small amount of money for every video that I released. Same thing if you're not at a point where I can spend, I totally understand that. Really appreciate the attention you gave by watching this video. Thank you for your support and I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye bye.